Be running through here. We got you, Susie. Okay, I made it work. Yay. Are we good? Do you guys have audio? Awesome. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, all right, I take that as a yes. It sounds like you guys are far away from me, so. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's kick this bad boy off. Hopefully you guys are having a good morning. Um, what, what I want to cover today, I don't know if, uh, Martin, if you was able to print that packet off I sent you, but I kind of want to go through this packet, uh, with you guys. I, uh, presented some of this stuff to our team, uh, last week or two weeks ago, and, uh, it's from the book, The One Thing, and, uh, it's really, it's a really good book. Uh, you know, I would suggest go picking it up, devouring it, reading it. Uh, however, I did build some notes and some outlines for you guys uh, and sent those over to Martin. Was you able to print those, Martin? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. So uh, what, I, what, I, what I really want to dig into uh, kicking this bad boy off is the 80-20 rule. It's, uh, it's Prado's principle, which states that 80% of our results come from, you know, uh, 20% of our actions. And as I've been able to master this uh, uh, over the last, I'd probably say really over the last five years, I've been able to, uh, you know, have a higher impact in terms of uh, what I'm focused on, where my revenue is coming from, uh, all of that stuff. And, you know, we, you know what, it, what is our one thing at Select Homes? Hey, Adam. What, what's up, brother? Hey, Adam, hang on one second. So just, does everybody, everybody knows Adam, right? Adam Bailey? So Adam, Adam, Ian? Ian, Adam? I don't know, I don't Adam. know, I don't know who Adam is. So, Adam, why don't you give a five, like a 30-second introduction of who you are and what you do for select homes so we can bring everybody up to speed first. All right, cool. So, yeah, uh, I forgot we had a couple of new people in the room. And uh, welcome to Select Homes. Welcome, guys, uh, to the group. I'm actually... Uh, one of our owners with Select Homes, and uh, I run our sales and expansion team here in the Wichita area. Um, obviously, I spend a lot of time on the road working with our expansion teams. Um, so I'll see, I'll see you guys next month. Uh, I think I was there uh, last month. I go to Springfield's uh, location tomorrow morning. However, I told uh, Martin, uh, you know, let's spend a little bit of time uh, together since I wasn't able to come uh, last month. But uh, uh, I'm excited to be able to work with you guys and meet any new people in the room. And so uh, I'm the guy that gets to work a lot with our coaches on our team and uh, really driving the revenue for our company. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's who I am. You're definitely going to learn a lot more about me on this call uh, uh, today. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, I'm uh, amped up. I'm a little, uh, I move with a purpose. And uh, I'm definitely going to get vulnerable with you guys today. You're going to learn a lot about me as we kind of work through uh, the spreadsheet together. So uh, hopefully that, uh, hopefully, you know, that lays the groundwork for what you was looking for, Martin. Thank you, sir. Cool, man. So, well, I take this always, I take this always back to our vision. You know, here at Select Homes, we, we really want to create the most successful and influential uh, uh, independent real estate company in the world by focusing, you know, on teamwork, leadership, personal growth, uh, all that fun stuff. And we believe without a doubt, you know, owners uh, like Martin, the new agents in the room, clients, all does not deserve better than the status quo. And it's all about, uh, you know, delivering on world-class client experience. Uh, for the client. And, and we will create a team across the nation that uh, really changes uh, the real estate industry by providing world-class service. And in doing so, we will create, uh, you know, raving fans. And we really want to be known for a brand throughout our community for our service results and the innovation, right? And, uh, and in doing so, I'm trying to, you know, be a good father, uh, constantly 
uh, you know, trying to be the best version of myself. Um, we, we all, we all struggle, um, to, to strive for greatness. Right. But, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's just one of these things. So hopefully you guys got your, you got your book out. I will want to talk about the domino effect, right? Right. So, um, th this right here, this, this chart is pretty powerful. So, uh, when new, when new agents come on and they, and they just see the production, like, I think Greg is going to close like 30 homes. Like Greg is a, uh, one of our top listing agents in the Wichita area. You know, he's going to, he's going to be able to close like, I think close to 30 homes, something crazy. Right. And I have the new agents in the room and they're looking at like, wow, man, how, you know, how's he, how's he been able to do that? And it, he's really just knocked over the dominoes to be able to knock over a bigger domino um, within our team model in terms of how he leverages the systems, uh, how he nurtures all of the seller leads that we've been able to help generate for him, um, and then how he moves and prioritizes his day. You know, a domino can knock, uh, knock down a, a second domino that's 50% 50, 50 bigger than its size. Like this domino right here is a two-inch domino, and by the time – it gets to that 25th domino, it can knock over uh, the size of like the world, uh, the, uh, uh, the empire tower, right? And then this is like domino 31 and it can knock over, uh, you know, M Mount Everest. Like, and by that 57th domino, it can, it, it, it can knock over a domino from, I think in the book it said from, from the distance from the earth to the moon. I mean, that's just crazy to me. And that's really uh, what I want to focus on is the compound effect. And uh, taking it back to doing something extraordinary, you know, because, you know, making calls and prospecting and, you know, you know, selling homes can be a grind. And I always want to take it back uh, to, to, to changing the real estate game and doing something extraordinary. And I would challenge you guys to really – you know, pick up your pens and, and take notes as I kind of dig into this work worksheet with you guys and I start sharing with you. And so uh, when I went through this worksheet and was uh, coming up with this presentation that I delivered a couple weeks ago, you know, what is something extraordinary I've personally done in my life? You know, I was one of the, I was the first person in my family to graduate high school. To me, that, to me, that was huge. Um, I come from a family with a lot of dysfunction, uh, a, a lot of addiction, and uh, to be able to graduate high school uh, was, a big, was a big thing for me. You know, I also became self-employed at the age of 22 and started my own business. I have, I have 100% of my rentals 100% paid off expanding an independent brokerage nationally, right? <clears throat> so these, there, those are a couple of things I've done already that I think that are extraordinary. Um, and even when, I, even when I talk to some of my friends and stuff that's known me like my whole life, they like, it's been amazing to watch you go through this journey and they're excited to see what else I can do next. But like, where did I start? Like, where did all of this begin? Like I've only been in real estate maybe seven years, right? So how I got started in real estate was, you know, Gerbic was reaching out to me. He was already 43rd in the nation. He was running like a celebrity type of brokerage. Um, you know, he was not number one in the state of Kansas already. And I had just sold my insurance agency. Uh, the market crashed 2008, 2009. I sold my insurance agency back to Aflac. Uh, took a year off and I was like, why wouldn't I just go sell real estate on my own? Because I was still full of a lot of ego. Uh, you know, I was like, I'll just do this on my own and compete against him. And he really sold me on the team model. And, and, and uh, you know, internet leads really wasn't part of the game back then. Everybody was just sitting around, you know, picking up floor time and waiting for the phone to ring you know, first generating internet leads. And so I told Gerbic, I can't make a commitment to you yet, but here's what I will do because it wasn't about the money to me. It was about something, getting, getting involved with something meaningful, you know, moving with a pro purpose. So I said, let me come in and I'll work as a consultant for free. And I started generating uh, uh, listing appointments for a hundred dollars a pop, no base, no, no, no guaranteed. And I did that for like six months, 
making a hundred, like three hundred, four hundred dollars a week. And, 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 and in that six months, I saw a huge opportunity with the independent brokerage to, to really expand, deliver qualified appointments to agents. We could build a call center. We could build departments around the client. Uh, because the old way of doing business was broken with the agent taking the pictures, the agent making the calls, the agent running the flyers out there, the agent doing all their own marketing. And I saw a huge, I saw a huge opportunity to, to deliver uh, better client services, but more importantly, deliver, deliver better business to the agent so we could keep them belly to belly and keep them focused on the game. And from that $100, $300 a week, because I was setting like three or four appointments, I was coming in working at night, and I would come in a little bit during the day, Gerbic and I negotiated a deal where I would keep building a call center, I would keep building the, the resource center, I started generating a ton of internet leads for our business, and then I started working in the field, right? <clears throat> and so I worked in the field for about three years, um, and... Uh, uh, a pendulum swing happened where to really uh, develop agents quicker and to scale and to start a coaching company and to be able to get in business with great people like Susie and Martin and all, all you fine agents in Kansas City, um, I had you know, I, I had to be able to take myself out of the field. And uh, that happened a couple of years ago, right? And I really, if, if, in right now, I'm scaling myself off of the Wichita office right now. I'm starting to work more on the business uh, uh, than in it. Um, and uh, Brian's actually at Boomtown right now. Uh, and I was supposed to be speaking in front of several hundred people this, this week. And this was going to be my message. You, if you move with a purpose, anything is possible. So from that $100 an appointment, not knowing anything about real estate just you know, six, seven years ago, to be able to flip it to now having ownership in the independent brokerage and growing across the region is, uh, I mean, if you would have asked me that just a couple of years ago, I, I probably would have said it would have taken a lot longer than what it has. So anything is possible. You know, even, even when... Like, maybe it's not that big of a deal for you to say, well, okay, he graduated high school. Like, I was the first person in my family, but when I look at, like, where that, what I had to go to to start that process to graduate my senior year, um, my stepdad threw all my shit out on the curb when I was, like, 16 years old. So, I lived with fran uh, friends and um, yeah, kind of in and out of some of my family's house. Uh, from the age of 16 to 18. And so for me to still stay committed to graduating high school and doing the right things, even when I was could have got sucked in with a bad crowd, you know, no, uh, no leadership from my parents, and there was no accountability, um, you know, to, to graduate, to graduate, right? And so that process of where I had to start to get through that uh, is even phenomenal. And, uh, you know, even, even starting a coaching company, uh, I, the coaching company was really just started to be able to give back to some of my friends uh, across the nation that wanted me to consult with them and to just help them with their business. And that thing has just turned into a, a, a full fledged company over the last couple of years. And, you know, it's, it's crazy how far it came in terms of knocking over these dominoes from my very first home I sold was only $25,000 home. Right. And now I'm attempting to thank, bigger and continuously thinking bigger and the people that I work with and I run work with and I network with, I want to continuously get you guys to stretch your belief system, operate outside of your comfort zone and anything is possible for you guys as well. And I tell that, and I tell that to the people, the people on our team and they see it and they feel it and we all buy into it because our big, hairy, audacious goal here at Select Homes is to have 500 offices across the nation. Right. The, the next thing I'm going to move on to is success list versus to do list. I kind of had you guys work through this last time uh, I was in Kansas City just to prove a point. Uh, in my, you know, I just turned 35 in January. In my early 30s, I used to try to take more stuff on. Like, I used to create big to-do lists, and the more stuff I had on the, my to-do list, the more successful, you know, I thought I was going to be. And quite frankly, I try to get stuff off of my list. I only try to have, 
really focus on that 20%. Like, what is my, my 20%? What is my success list? And as agents, I, you know, I, I challenge you to work from success list, not to do list. Write down 10 things that's on your plate today, tomorrow. You know, make, you know, make some notes. Like, I had you guys do this from laundry to feeding the dogs to grocery shopping to picking the kids up. Making prospecting calls, going to meetings, right? Boil it down, boil it down to success list. Be able to leverage technology. Like the best thing, like for me in terms of uh, uh, grocery shopping, used to be a, a time suck, and I and I. Uh, I do it with my wife once a month. The best thing that could have came out to help us save time was click list. And I don't know if you guys have that there, but I no longer have to grocery shop or uh, my wife has to go grocery shopping. Like she'll just click list it, order it online and I go pick it up. I mean, that's huge. Like being able to leverage things like that to buy our, buy my time back and to buy back time on my family uh, is, is important. Right. Um, <clears throat> being able to say no to things uh, when, when I ran our whole coaching company and worked with every single agent in our office, I couldn't say no to people. My, my door was like a revolving door and I was a yes, man. Yes, I can help you today. Yes, I can do this. Yes, no problem. Yes, I will do that, do that for you. Right? Like when I learned how to say no to people and to manage people, I had a huge impact uh, on my on on my business uh, and the net the uh, revenue that I'm generating, right? Um, and so for so I coach our coaches on our team now. I no longer work with every single agent. And to be able to meet with me or get on my calendar, you have to schedule it. Um, you can no longer just walk in my office and you know dump all your problems on me or complain or um, you know, talk about the successes that you had. Um, you, you really, you really have to respect your time because if you don't respect your time, how do you expect other people to respect your time? Right. And I've had to condition our agents, uh, that work and work for our company, uh, 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 to do this. But also I, I, I want them to be able to condition their clients to be able to protect their time, to be able to, um, not feel like they're running ragged to make six figures uh, a year. Right. <clears throat> You know, what's something that you already did today or even last week that you could that you could have waited or not been done done at all? Sure, some chaos is gonna ensue. Like when I started saying no to people when I quit caring about the other 80%, there there is a certain amount of chaos that is gonna is going to pop up. However, it's not it's not you don't have you don't have to operate uh, with with that chaos, right? Um, and what's an important task that, that you still haven't done yet that you needed to do this last week in terms of generating revenue? <clears throat> I, call, I, call it eating, I call it eating the frog. I know that, uh, you know, I, I talked about energy management with you guys before. I don't believe in time management. I believe in energy management. And I'll get more into that uh, uh, here in a little bit, but what, what I mean by energy management, I'll just use a good example. Like we have four owners here in Wichita. Uh, Brian Brundage is uh, one of our uh, partners and he, uh, he's also a listing agent with us. He, he, he gets a lot of stuff done at night, like 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I get a lot of my stuff done in the morning, right? But does it make either one of us that much more effective than the other person? No, we just manage our energy to be able to get the stuff done that we, that we need to. He just happens to be able to be a night person, and I just happen to be a morning person. I've showed you guys sheets before on when's the best time to, to, uh, to prospect. So if you're a morning person, I've challenged you guys before and said, you guys need to be on the phone at 730. M majority of your appointments are going to be set from 730 in the morning until 10 or 11. And it's going to be a grind all day long until about 3.30 or 4.30 to 6.30, 7.30, right? Um, and, and, so, and, and, and so if you're more of a 
an a, a evening person or whatever, I would really be time blocking or energy management blocking to focus on your dollar producing activities to be able to get those in every single day from, you know, four to, to seven or five to seven, unless you're a morning person and you can start hitting it at 730. Um, Shelly is our lead ISA. Some of you guys might jump on and listen to her make calls on Monday morning. Uh, however, she sets, you know, she works from eight to eight to three and a majority of her appointments that are set every single week are from that eight to 11 time slot right there. And so, um, being able to eat that frog first thing in the morning or uh, say no to everything else and, and focus and move with a purpose and prioritize your day from that, you know, seven to 11 mark to legion. I mean, that's what it's, uh, that's what it's all about. My last year in the field, I sold 44 houses working part time, 44 houses part time because I prioritize how I uh, focused on my legion and how I prioritized with my clients, but also I did run the showing uh, uh, partner model, right? You guys have a cheat sheet too, so you guys can kind of go through uh, with, the, with the cheat sheet, kind of, kind of touching on, you know, learn to say no to things that don't matter. The lies of multitasking. I used to multitask. I still try to. Um, I still try to multitask. I try to... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, 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 try to, I try to do a lot of stuff and I had to get rid of distractions. And for me, like I had to put a Facebook eradicator like on my Facebook. So for an example, like I'll go show you guys this right now. Like I try to go to my Facebook newsfeed. It's nothing, it gets blocked. And then usually there's like a, just a, a quote and it, that quote changes. Cause I had a habit, I, I generate a lot of leads. I run a coaching uh, company off Facebook. A majority of my leads come in off Facebook. And throughout the day I found myself just not subconsciously, not even noticing it, I would be on Facebook. And so I had to put this eradicator on here. So every time I go to Facebook and I'm just on autopilot, this pops up. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? And then I'll just get right off Facebook. So I have this eradicator on here where I can't even get on Facebook. <clears throat> what other distractions distract you guys? Is it, you know, one of your peers that likes to talk and gossip and tell jokes? Like, um, you know, f you know, for me, it's my, my phone or email going off. Like, um, constantly refreshing email or, um, you know, switching, jumping back and forth between um, uh, all types of different things from emailing to Facebook to texting to, to, to whatever it may be. So whenever I focus on my dollar producing activities, I kill all my notifications. I shut my phone off because I talk about jam sessions a lot. You guys can only really have a, a purposeful focus for about 90 minutes. And some people can really only focus for 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30, whatever it may be. It's like a muscle and you have to work it up. And, and, and I believe that's how you should prospect in 90 minute increments. Like go hard for 90 minutes and don't switch back and forth between contract drama, any other, uh, uh, you know, stuff going on on, you know, Pinterest or Twitter or Facebook, but, but focus on getting into as many valid conversations, qualified, meaningful conversations and lead gen. Um, cause you know, cause, cause that's, that's really where your business is coming from is the quality, the quality of the conversations that you're having on any given day. Um, and making sure that you can get in, get your work done and get out. Um, and that's really how I try to try to focus on it. So I got, so I have what a whole day in front of me and my 20% today was to be able to deliver to you guys like live and live and direct. And so, um, being able to present for a couple hours today and then be able to get ready to go to Springfield to do that, to do that tomorrow. And so, um, my 20% right now is live, live and direct, right? I couldn't be multitasking right now on my phone or, you know, you know, 
twiddling with email or whatever, whenever I'm going live and direct and, and we switch so much throughout the day and we're losing so many, uh, you know, so I, I think in the book it said, uh, probably right here on the cheat sheet, you lose almost 30% of your effectiveness when you multitask. <clears throat> I truly, I truly believe that. And so I would challenge you guys to have jam sessions, jam out for 90 minutes and see how much you can get done in 90 minutes by going hard and then taking a break, right? Checking Facebook, you know, dealing with email, whatever it may be. <clears throat> And if you stick to making calls, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it in the morning time, you know, in between that 7.30 to, to 11, or if you're more of an afternoon person, then stick into that, you know, four to seven and squeezing 90 minutes in there and having a radical focus and doing that for 90 days, your business will look completely different. I promise you. So, Brainstorm some ideas to eliminate, eliminating, uh, you know, distractions. You know, for me, it's Facebook Eradicator, you know, I silence my phone. Um, and uh, sometimes I won't even put my phone on my desk. I'll just keep it in my bag whenever I go there just because uh, if I need to, if I'm trying to work on a project or something like that. Or uh, cr create a do not disturb sign. Like I have... Mark has that, like our director of our coaching company. Um, uh, I, I have a do not disturb sign. Like I put it up whenever I want to get into a flow and get into some cadence and rhythm and I'm trying to jam out. I don't need to be distracted um, by an ISA, by a call center or whatever. And people know that when they see that sign, like, oh, he's in, he's in his flow state right now. And I would challenge you guys to get into your flow state. Nothing equals... Nothing, nothing, uh, we're going to move on, uh, moving on to number six, nothing, no, all things don't matter and nothing is equal. When I started, when I started reprioritizing my day <clears throat> and how I approach my day, it, that's, that's really when I started having a huger impact on uh, the people I work with or my clients or the systems I'm involved in. And I had, I, I, I had these long lists, right? Like I had these long lists, like everybody. I used to think the more stuff on my to-do list, the more successful I would be. <clears throat> and so I, I challenge you guys to list out five important tasks that you have accomplished this last month. Like just, just write them down. For me, it's working with the new, new West Side location. Uh, we're maxed out at our West Side location, uh, you know, uh, been working on, you know, finding a new, uh, a new location. Um, you know, I promoted three new coaches on our team. And so getting them into the inner circle, working, working with me, um, getting them synced into the new meeting times, stuff like that. When I help them to build a team within the team, you know, helped hire interview slash onboard new agents, rolled out new live and direct coaching product created webinar content for, for you guys, for our expansion team in, you know, Springfield. These are just a couple, I'm just sharing a couple, just a couple of my things, right? But if I was to reorder them from most important to least important, to me, recruiting and hiring is the most important thing a company and as an owner should be focused on. So hire and onboard. We are, we're onboarding like four new agents this last week. That's the most important thing to me. Getting a new product service to the marketplace was probably number two for me. Had to get an entry level product to the market. Our coaching company uh, charges anywhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month per client, and I had a lot of people saying, "Hey, man, I want to opt in, but I need a lower entry entry level product." So I had to get um, live and direct to the marketplace for one hundred ninety nine dollars. <clears throat> creating content like this to be able to deliver and share with you guys, create, you know, finishing these packets, getting them out, going through, adding my content, critically thinking through this stuff so I could share with you guys um, was uh, probably number four on my list. <clears throat> and then working with the new location and the coaches are probably, uh, probably last, right? Most people though, when they're creating their success list or 
um, uh, their tasks that they have to do, they're not prioritizing it. And I would just, you know, I, I would start prioritizing these tasks, not just writing them down as it pops in your mind, but being able to prioritize them so you know you're getting the most important stuff done first. I hate when I have to slow things down and go sit in a final interview. I hate the process to onboard a new agent. It's just, it's tedious. I mean, it, I, I don't like it. However, that's the most important thing that uh, our business needs is constantly recruiting and hiring, onboarding and developing new agents, right? And so I have to, um, I, I, when I know that that's the most important thing for our business, I have to slow things down and go work with our broker, go work with our coaches, get in on a final interview to see which team that they're going to be fit, fit for because I have seven coaches on our team and they all have five or six people that work under them and their team, right? And so uh, I try to match people in terms of disc profiling, disc <coughs> uh, uh, profiling uh, and getting them to make sure that uh, they're going to be a good fit for their coach or team lead that they're going to be able to work with. So, so Toby works on our team, and uh, Toby was our agent of the month last month. You guys know I put the just do it like picture with him every month, and she. She was our buyer agent of the month last month, and I think she sold, like, I don't know, 15 homes or something crazy. And she sold, like, seven in one week, uh, that week that she had won two. And I, I asked her because I asked her, I said, what do you think has really changed this year from last year? Because she couldn't do a lot of volume and consistently carry that volume. And what I, what I mean by that is she – she could sell like seven, eight, nine homes in one month, but she'd be on the roller coaster effect and be broke the next month and just close a couple, like two, three. And she said, really being able to work in this system and uh, being able to form better habits and uh, uh, make my income predictable through the blind spots that we coach them on in terms of uh, keeping a pipeline, you know, tagging everybody with a living, breathing conversion number. Um, and uh, she is a coach on our team as well. And, and um, she's, she struggled with being able to coach and help others because she has a lot of good charisma and she can get results for herself. But, you know, you really, you really learn when you have to be responsible for other people. And she said creating better habits uh, in terms of the way that she manages her business um, over time to be able to make her, make her business predictable. And she said, you know, and, and she said as she became more disciplined and leans on the system and trusts the systems and the people around her, she's been able to focus on lead gen, focusing on creating, uh, you know, uh, a bigger database of, uh, of uh, clients. <clears throat> and uh, that's, you know, that, that's why she's been able, she's been able to, uh, to sell seven to 10 homes month in and month out for, for a while. So she, uh, she takes it all back to these habits. And I just did a 21 day challenge with our team and uh, it was, it, it was pretty good. So physically and uh, will work. So we did it personally and uh, business, right? So I made a challenge that I was going to do something business wise for 21 days. I was going to work 21 days straight. And then also I was going to go to the gym 21 days in a row or whatever. Right. And I wanted to create a good habit of eating better, eating cleaner, um, you know, not consuming as much, uh, uh, beer or wheat beers or whatever. And, uh, and, you know, moving the meter forward with the business because I had a lot of projects. So I said, who wants to be able to join with me, right? Let's be disciplined for 21 days and create a new habit. And I lost 20 pounds uh, in 70 days and uh, obviously launched a new product and got a lot of exciting stuff happening with the business. But the agents that took on that challenge like they're, they're now making like ten to $15,000 last month, this month. And so, uh, you know, I would challenge you guys, if you're looking to form any new habit with your, with your life, with your business, 
take a 21 day challenge and chunk it up and then see where you're at after 21 days and then try to get to the 66 days. I'm in the 70 of some days for, for myself. I, I loved when I was there and, uh, you, you know, I saw a uh, test and, and she was looking good and, you know, creating the habits of going to the gym. Right. And uh, the, the other habits that I'm looking to pick up, even in terms of business is I'm looking to make recruiting for our expansion teams predictable. So I'm going to have to create a new habit and get this new system built to be able to make recruiting ha a habit uh, and, and uh, have that predictable for our expansion teams, right? Another habit is I stopped eating processed foods and eat clean. Five days uh, of working out in the gym. What are some of the things that I'm having to change or what did I have to change to be able to to be a better disciplined person going into the first of the year to be able to hit my goals and to help other people hit their goals. Meal prepping was, meal prepping was a big one. Juicing, like we'll, we'll spend Sunday evening making juice uh, for, for the rest of the week. <clears throat> I attempt to go to the gym every single day and I tell myself I'm going to the gym today. That allows me to hit my goal of at least going five days a week. And that's about right. I go about five to six days a week, even though my goal is when I wake up, I tell myself I'm going to the gym today. How am I fitting it in? <clears throat> being, able, being able to create these systems uh, to make the uh, recruiting uh, predictable for our expansion teams is working with a new agent and then something or a new ISA. Um, they're going to be the one nurturing these relationships and being able to get that key hire done off, just profiling, working directly with myself, getting them synced into the call center. Um, these are some things that I'm uh, working on to be able to move the meter forward with, uh, with business. <clears throat> working on building a career night. Uh, we, you know, we've been blessed that you know, we've, we've been number one for a long time. And um, some of our challenges in terms of uh, being disciplined with recruiting has been, been easy for us because uh, we're the king of the hill, right? And so we turn down way more people than, 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 than we hire. However, that's not – uh, the case for some of our expansion teams. So being able to build new systems and new recruiting habits and stuff like that is what I'm looking to tackle going into uh, the first of the year. <clears throat> you guys, are you guys hanging with me? You guys good? Yeah. All right. Love it. So The next thing I'm going to talk about is willpower. <clears throat> it's a finite resource, and a lot of people think that we can just turn it on and off whenever we want, and it's not, it's not the case. Right, this, is, this is a pretty good, pretty good example or visual from the book that I really liked. Um, so let's say you're gonna have a jam session. We're just gonna call it that. Like, look, you can peak pretty easily if your willpower is high and your battery is fully charged, right? However, if you're gonna try to, you know, wait until your, your energy is drained and you've <laughs> you know, spent a lot of time on Facebook or YouTube or gossiping and whatever, and your day has just got away from you, and then you're just trying to make up for it at the end of the day and prospect or get caught up on your to-dos or your, uh, your new calls or what, whatever, like you're really not going to peak and be at your best. And as I have gotten older, I have learned that I can't just turn willpower on. Like I used to be able to just say, all right, I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to knock it out. However, if I don't feel great and I don't feel good, I'm not just going to go through the motion and call my leads. If I'm not feeling it that day or I'm not, my mindset is not right, I'm going to put prospecting off an extra day because I'm not just going to go through the motion to say I went through the motion to be able to just uh, have pointless conversations where I'm not impacting anyone. I'm not influencing them. I'm just going through the, the process just to go through the process, and I could really care less what happens one way or another, right? We've all been there. We've all, we've, we've all, uh, we've all been there. And so if your mindset isn't right and your willpower is drained, recharge, 
and and then get on your calls or hit it. But just don't go through the motion just to go through the motion, right? Because you're gonna have to be able to influence people with your you know initial calls, your follow up, your decision making, the emails that you're sending out, the texts, right? All, all, all of this stuff. Being able to time block in the morning to do these activities first before you run out of battery is critical. That's what I believe in. However, you guys have to manage your energy to see fit uh, for, for yourself, your family, <clears throat> all of that stuff, right? Interesting concept from, from the book, work-life balance. Like, we've all heard this, right? And here is how many times work-life balance has been mentioned in newspaper, magazine, articles, on the internet, and it's really exploded from the year 2000 to, to now, right? We've all heard work-life balance. <clears throat> I agree with what uh, Jay had outlined in this book, is it's somewhat of a myth. And when I really started digging in and thinking about this, uh, I, I tend to agree with it because we, we all talk about work-life balance and we have to have it. However, if you don't move, if you don't move one way or another in extreme action, it's going to be pretty close there to the line and you're not going to get a lot done at work. You're not going to get a lot done at home. There has to be some counterbalance, uh, uh built into this. When you're at work, get as much stuff done as you possibly can at work. And I have a hard time of shutting it off and being able to just focus on my life. Like me having a kid has helped. I have a two-year-old. My wife and I have been together since I was 17. And so I have, uh, am addicted to, I'm, ad I'm addicted to results. I'm addicted to working, right? And <clears throat> being able to Get the most out of my energy or my willpower when I'm at work is what I focus on when I'm at work. And then when I come home, I, I, I try to shut it off. <clears throat> and I really think that we end up counterbalancing and it looks much like this right here. <clears throat> so things that I've had to do to try to focus on uh, my life uh, uh, balance uh, is try to try to make a commitment to date my wife again. Like I said, we've been in a relationship since we were 17. There's a certain things you take for granted. Um, and uh, so, you know, having, having that time blocked where, you know, I can focus on our relationship. Uh, my work has hurt my relationship. Uh, before and uh, it's uh, it's not fun when I have to go through that process and I have to find that balance <clears throat> what has worked for me in the past is one of my coaches taught me this and I started doing it about three years ago and it really really works I go hard for about 90 days and work hard for about 90 days and then I take a week off so that doesn't mean that I don't work, but I just throttle myself almost all the way down, reflect over the, la the, the last 90 days, um, maybe spend a little more time with my son, uh, you know, take him to do stuff. Uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, my wife and I will do stuff. But I'm coming up on, I've been going hard since about Christmas time. And so I'm coming up on, close to my 90 days, and then I'm going to throttle down for a week. I'm going to recharge my battery. I'm going to uh, reflect on the last 90 days. I'm going to grade my, my last 90 days. And then I'm going to strategically plan my next 90 days. And this is a good way, guys, to stop and, and just stop. Because we, get, we, get, we just get caught up in just going through the motion of our day and then we don't even know where we're going. We're just get up, keep doing the same shit every single day. And I try to do different stuff every year, whether it's replacing myself in the business or I'm doing different stuff because I don't want to keep living the same life over and over again. And the only way to, to, uh, to, to change that is to stop and reflect. And so um, it, it was hard a couple years ago when, because I almost started feeling guilty. Like, because I wasn't working or I'm just taking days off and I'm not doing anything. It felt weird as hell. But, and, and 
and it doesn't matter what's going on. You just got to do it. And so there's a little nugget that I do go hard for about 90 days, a good quarter, take, take a week off, strategically plan, hit it again for another quarter and just do it. That way, that way right there, you're getting one month off a year. Like you're getting one month off a year if you do it like that. And when I normally throttle down and I reflect and then I come back, I come back like so much furious, like attacking my day. I'm a lot more focused. I mean, I'm just getting after it when I come back and people can tell and they're like, it's good. First of all, I would have just kept powering through that week, right? Uh, versus shutting it down and recharging. <clears throat> so I've talked about this before with you guys, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And uh, for you guys to grow, and there's a lot of opportunity for the new agents in the room, for Martin and Susie, for, for all of the agents there, there's a huge opportunity for you guys to take over market sharing and, uh, and, and to really change the Kansas City market. Like you guys are setting on something great, right? But it's gonna have to take a growth mindset and you have to believe without a doubt that it is up to you guys to do it. And we have to be accountable to making that ha happen, you know, and focused on moving that meter forward. Versus, you know, um, a fixed mindset is, you know, we just really want to, you know, stay complacent. We don't want to operate outside of our comfort zone. You know, we really don't want to focus on the team. We don't want to focus on the systems. And uh, it's uh, it's exciting for you guys. And and I last time I was there, I know I hadn't been there in like three or four months, but I saw that the team had grown emotionally a lot, right? Um, I'm not the smartest dude in the box. However, I pride myself on emotional intelligence and that team has emotionally grown and you guys should be proud of that. And you guys are actually going to, uh, I think really take off this coming year. So I'm looking forward to being able to, uh, uh, help build this out with you guys and to continuously move the, the meter forward with, uh, with the growth mindset. <clears throat> I do want to. I do want to jump. I do want to jump around a little bit here. Uh, the themes of uh, pr productivity, um, you know, number eleven in, in the booklet. You know, circle the one that you're most guilty of. You know, for me, I had to, uh, you know, get bad influences out of my social network, and so D was probably uh, what I what I had to do, and the. <laughs> I mean, I had to change my whole net worth, right? Like your net worth is going to be exactly your network, right? And um, in my early 20s, I didn't have a great net worth. Um, I just had a good work ethic. I knew I had a vision. You know, I was building an insurance company. However, I was still running around with my bad friends from high school. I was still networking with them. And I wasn't living a, a – my life really wasn't congruent. And once I really changed – my social network in terms of my life, my personal life, my business associates, all of that stuff, it, it had major ramifications on, on my life. You know, being able to say no to going out and, and hanging, out, hanging out and partying with, with old friends, like eliminating family from my life. Like I have seven aunts and they all have three or four or five kids each and they're all dysfunctional and riddled with drugs and issues and like, I had to cut almost my whole family out of my life, and we were really raised uh, to stick together. However, you know, um, you can't. I couldn't associate with them anymore. I couldn't associate with the addiction. I couldn't associate myself with the stupidity, with their actions, with their network, and so that was really tough for me. Was rebuilding. <laughs> a network and and how I manage my family and how I visit them and who I allow into to, to my life was was probably the toughest thing you know I had to do but it really it really had an impact on my business and I had to release negative people from my inner circle um, I coach the coaches on our team and I deal with uh, 
the corporate and the management side of things. And there's really, there's really no negativity in our group. And uh, it's kind of a beautiful thing. Like people know to not complain around me, not to, uh, you know, be just to be negative and, uh, or I'm going to use as a, as an opportunity to preach and change their mindset and the way that they're looking at stuff like that. And so if you have negative people in your life, I challenge you to challenge them. Uh, for me, I've had to let people go from our sales team. I had a guy that was so negative and he was a top salesperson on our, our company a couple years ago. Okay. But he didn't give a, he didn't give a shit about the clients. Like he wouldn't communicate with them. And I was always taking complaints, but the dude was always selling like nine, 10 homes every single month. The day I let him go, he had nine pending and under contract. And when I met him, he just said, you know, my production doesn't mean anything. And I said, you're a negative person and you have a huge impact on the team and how it affects others. And as, as a leader, my whole job is to protect our culture and to protect our agents and to make sure that they have a good, healthy, thriving environment in terms of culture, belief systems, mindset, all of that stuff. And so if you have negative people in your life, you got to get rid of them and in your business or like I had to do a family. And, uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it'll change the game once you do that. I just had a negative agent leave. She'd been with me a long time. And, uh, I was actually going to uh, release her, and, uh, and I don't know. I think she caught wind of it or something like that. She's been gone for a couple months now. And at our coaches meeting just this last week, one of the newer coaches, he said, I didn't realize how negative she was and how it affected the East location until, like, she's gone now. And, and so, I mean, you have to be mindful – of, of every word matters, right? In terms of how you're affecting or um, inspiring your teammates, your family, and, and all of that stuff. And so, hopefully, hopefully you guys are building a great, uh, you know, a great uh, culture there. So, just a little bit of some stories uh, about our culture, things I've had to do um, to be able to, to uh, protect my sanity. Uh, when it comes to my family, my teammates, all of that stuff. You know, so successful people protect their time. And that's really what I pride myself on is really protecting my time and making sure it doesn't become a time suck for my family or negative people or negative family. Like I'm channeling all of my energy to the people that want it. Like they, 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 they want to work with me. They want, they want to make more money. They, 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 they want to have, um, you know, that, that family, um, and work balance where when they're at home, they can shut it off and spend time with their family and, and go hard for 90 days and have money in the bank account where they can throttle it down for a week. And they're not operating out of scarcity, but we're really stepping into abundance, right? And it starts with protecting your time and time blocking. Like we hear this stuff all the time, like time blocking, yada, 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 right? Energy management. But I'm, but I'm telling you, schedule your day and stick to it. Like my morning, like tomorrow, what does your day look like tomorrow? Do you have every minute already planned out? If you don't, you're going to be in big trouble. Like you're not, you're not building anything that's going to be great. Like my, I, keep, I, I keep a week booked out. Like well, I know exactly what I'm doing every minute of the day for at least a week. You know, to give you an example, tomorrow morning I drive to Springfield. Midday, I get set up. Tuesday after, or in the afternoon, I'm training and coaching for a couple hours. In the evening time, our partner there in Springfield, he owns a gym. And so to be able to get my workout in and stay committed, stay committed to the lifestyle changes I made, I'm going to go work out at his gym. And then after that, I'm going to be doing dinner and networking to help with the recruiting. I have a few agents there that uh, I'm going to go out to dinner with that are interested in our brokerage, right? And then uh, hit, you know, hit, you know, hit the bed probably about 11 o'clock or so. So every single minute is planned out and my whole week is planned. Out. Hopefully you guys are planning your week out as well. <clears throat> the best, the best thing that I did was I went back to uh, old, you know, we're all about digital calendars and all of this stuff. I went and got, uh, I went and got a calendar from our title company <clears throat> and I started making X's on there when I was going to work out. Like I was 
stuff. And I was trying to not break the chain. So I would put these big X's on there like this to visually see that I'm going to the gym every single day. And my whole goal was to not break the chain of X's. So I would even do that with prospecting, right? And start to start to build a chain of X's and put it up where you can visually see it because the days that I didn't go to the gym and, or uh, I broke my chain of X's, I could visually see it and it would bug the shit out of me. Like, and I'd have to live with seeing it and telling myself I broke that chain and I'm not going to break that chain uh, again for a couple weeks, hopefully. Right. Um, and uh, there's people on our team that have, are, have a chain with prospecting and they've went, we've went and got these big calendars. I mean, they're like huge calendars from our title company. Um, so you guys could probably get those from your title company. Lenders usually have them and give them out, but uh, I definitely would hang it up and, uh, and start your chain of X's with prospecting, working out, creating content, whatever you're trying to do to keep the, keep the meeting moving forward. <clears throat> so, you know, what is something that you need to do this week? How long do you think it'll take, you know, from prospecting to dealing with fires, inspections, showings? I used to not really believe in Parkins law. And it's uh, basically states we're usually, you know, we usually think a, a given task will take much longer than it should. Most because we're not concentrating or having that uh, radical focus. Um, but when I started, when I started to really believe in uh, Parkins law and I really picked it up from Tony Robbins when I was at one of his events a couple of years ago, here's the best way that I can explain uh, explain it like you know when you're about to go on vacation or you're going out of town for a couple days doesn't it seem like everything happens at once like people want to see homes they want to write contracts you have so much paperwork to do uh, and it's amazing that you get all of that stuff done before it's time to get out of town or leave like every time I was about to go out of town like I was having to write offers and had fires and it was amazing how much stuff I was able to get done within a short time frame when normally it would have took me a couple of days to knock all of that stuff out right <clears throat> so being, so, so th that's how I try to operate is under that radical focus to be able to get as much stuff done as I can. When I'm at work, I'm present. Like I'm in a flow state and I'm just getting as much stuff done as I can. So I don't have to take it back home. And I try to apply Parkins law to, to that, you know, I've created a bunker. I've created workspace uh, for myself. This is important. And I think some of you guys have struggled with that uh, uh, last year was being able to create space where you could focus on your energy and management, avoiding distractions, working, you know, uh, uh, diligently on stuff and being able to, to get as much stuff done uh, as quick as possible, whether it's, you know, you know, calling all your leads, having a jam session where you're calling a couple hundred people. Like in a 90 day or in a 90 minute span, running the auto dialer, leveraging technology, being able to focus on your one thing and to eliminate people and uh, uh, identify your workspace where you don't get any distractions done is, uh, is what I've been able to create for myself, right? And whenever I'm in that flow state, they, you know, they respect it. <clears throat> I bring juice into work, I'll meal prep, um, you know, so it cuts down on a lot of my thinking. What am I going to have for lunch today? Where are we going to go? Who am I going to lunch with? What's going to happen today? I know I'm juicing. I'm, I'm, I brought my meal. I already, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be jamming out in here for 90 minutes. And, uh, I know that you need something from me right now, but it's going to have to wait until I get out of my one thing, right. Uh, from Shelly to our coaches, to Trent, to everyone, everyone knows to respect that. And so you guys got to start conditioning each other that when you're in that flow state, nobody messes with you because it's critical to your income. That's going to dictate whether you're a six-figure earner or not um, is what happens in those critical times when you're trying to get your uh, stuff done in your, your little bunker, right, or your cubicle or wherever you make your prospects and calls from. <clears throat> Stay accountable to, to each other and, and your friends, right? So uh, I give you an, I'll give you an example. The thing that keeps me accountable is I talk a lot of crap on social media. 
I mean, a lot. Like, I make bold claims. So um, the, some ways that I stay accountable to my goals is social media and with my peers publicly. When you say something publicly, you're going to have to deliver on it in most cases. We sold, um, we sold 388 homes one year, and I said, our goal is 700 homes we're going to sell. Mike said, you're crazy. Like, you can't tell the group that. So Mike told the group, we're going to set a goal of 500 units, 500 homes sold. And we just coming off a year where we did 800 or 388 units. I said, no, scratch the 500. And I went around and told everyone that worked on the sales team, we are going to hit 700 units regardless if Gerbic believes in it. I want you to believe in it. I don't care if Gerbic didn't believe we was going to sell 700 homes. I believed it. And I got everyone else bought in that we can grow this company almost by 100%. I said it on social media. I said it to our group. I talked about it every single day. I talked about it on YouTube. I talked about it on Facebook. I talked about it at events. I talked about it to my family. I talked about it to my friends. I made it public. That year we grew by 75% and sold 688 homes. If I would have believed that we were only gonna sell 500 homes and I let other people believe that we were only gonna sell 500 homes, we probably would have only sold 500 homes. But with a purposeful approach, and we put, we put meaning behind it to hit it, that was important. And then that next year, I said, we're going to sell 1,000. I said we were going to sell 1,000 homes on social media for a year before, or for two years before we actually did it. I thought we would have went from 700 or 688 homes to over 1,000. <clears> 1,000. <throat> We went from you know, 688 to 853 to 953 to 1,003. You know, it, it was uh, much more of a slower grind. However, I had the whole team bought in that we can develop more leaders. We can sell 1,000 homes. We can get in the top 10 in the nation, according to the Wall Street Journal, in terms of sales teams. We are a top 10 sales team, and I got everybody to believe it. And in the last four years, we've been ranked ninth to 12th in the nation in terms of uh, units with the sales team, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> By the purposeful approach, there's an 85% failure rate in real estate within five years because there's no vision, there's no mission, there's no support, there's no accountability. I have to recruit seven agents to get one to stick for more than two years. It's a sad math. <clears throat> you know, people come in and they love to come to my sales meetings and they love to get all jacked up and they you know, like the motivation, the inspiration. However, most people go through the entrepreneur approach in real estate. <clears throat> you know, they start grinding, they come in and, uh, you know, they're seeing somebody like uh, Greg, he's going to close up 30 homes this month mid probably, you know, right under 30 homes, right? And they're going to come in and see that and think that that's easy. But they don't understand that he moves with a purpose, how he prioritized his day to be able to hit that production to make that type of profit. And when they hit their first ceiling and whenever they hit their first stumbling block, they're going to be disappointed. They're going to blame. I'm the first person people blame when they're not successful on our team. And I don't even really work with them uh, directly, right? I'm the first person that they blame. However, I believe if you can't be successful with us, you're not going to be successful any other place and you need to stop right where you're at and water your own grass, look your own self in the mirror, run a really predictable business, leverage your teammates and the support system, and you'll be successful. Most, pe most, most people um, want to blame it on the leads. They want to blame it on the season. Um, you know, they think that they, they're going to chase splits. They're going to, you know, go get paid a higher split. So all of a sudden they're paid a higher split. So now they're going to be able to go be more productive. I mean, it's these, these people continuously cycle through this, through this their whole life, probably with any other work that they've done. There's people that leave our team. They just broker hop, right? And, and they're not, it doesn't matter what the split is. It's, it's how you prioritize your day. It's how you move with a purpose. And it's how you overcome 
your obstacles. I give customized coaching to each one of our team members on our team because everybody is facing a different problem and a different journey and a different stage in their, in their, uh, I mean, in their career. And uh, it's how you have these breakthroughs and how you keep knocking over that domino to knock over a bigger domino is going to dictate how successful you are or not. <clears throat> You know, what's the, what's the biggest problem in your life right now? You know, what is it? Every one of us have different problems. For me, I'm trying to manage growth. Like our company is like growing and we're expanding. And so being able to manage growth, I'm always replacing myself. That's my biggest problem in my life right now. Constantly trying to uh, replace myself with people that I trust, with people that move with a purpose, with people that are bought into our vision and our mission and live our core values. Like what is, what is the biggest, what's your biggest problem? Those are good problems to have right now for me, managing growth, replacing myself. I mean, those seem like opportunities to me, not problems, but they are the biggest problems. <clears throat> You know, what, list, list five ways that you can improve the situation with your issues that you have now. You know, for me, it's time management, uh, working more on the business, not so much in it. Yeah. Adam, can you hear me? Go for it. Uh, can we pause real quick? We just had a delivery to the office. So we had a delivery. It's Kit's birthday today. And uh, what's going on, bro? For everybody who has not met Lori, this is Lori with Moto Mama's Munchies, and Kit had a, a, a delivery from it's from uh, Susan Sunberg. Sunberg. That's for you to take home. She said, "Take this home and share these with Susie only." With uh, <laughs> yeah, because I don't even have to ask these are Lori's. Um, so the PSG yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. cake. Adam, you wish you were here, here don't you?
Avery Mark. Happy 29th. Yeah, Dude, yeah. sometimes it's no, my mileage. Yeah. Lauren, is that keto? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Just my mileage. Happy 28th year. It doesn't fit in that keto category. Thank you. Wendy? 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 What? Thanks for not sharing. Why? It wasn't gluten. I was really? How's Lady's mom doing? She's better. I met her. <laughs> I don't know. Blood thinner level, pro time or whatever. They can't have a little shot. But sometimes yeah, as a showing agent, um, you can, but you have to have an EQ. You have to have an EQ. Um, um, Martin may have some ideas. Um, on what to do, but we don't really, uh, as an agent, you have to be able to let one and out. You know what I mean? And you can't do that without it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that your, your biggest thing is going to be is having your needs confirmed and your appointments, and then having people like us go on to wait for you with your clients and tell you get your team to do it on your own. That's, that's, that's your yeah, I have a that's that's big an opportunity. We're going to talk about what you've got and what their situation is in the attorney lab, and then you'll get more. And I'll transfer some old leads over because Kip's done great um, converting some old leads that just kind of fell off. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit in more, more detail. And, Normally, we have regions that come on board to be showing partners for other people when they're really busy, but you have to have a key to get in. And okay, Bobby said, all right, we'll have to you. I'll vacuum later. Thank you. It's your doctor. It is easiest that way because you have to have money, you know, you have to be able to, to afford. Um, you're having the three days a week is better than most people, you know. And like Rick, um, he's working full time in real estate, but he's working full time in real estate for a bit. Um, to a call in the afternoon. So he works yeah. until two and does well at least from two to nine. Uh, you know, so if he's not working full time, it's just did a different time frame than uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll we'll work through some of the things that you're challenged with. Struggling with. All right, guys, we're going to get started again. I know. I know, that's crazy. All right, Adam. All right, cool, guys. So, I want you guys to uh, really think about uh, in that worksheet, you know, what are some of your biggest problems in your life right now? Reverse engineer some ways to handle it uh, because the bigger the problems you solve is going to be a direct uh, um, tied directly to your income. And so being able to solve different problems um, each year is going to be critical to, to, to you growing. So, you know, for me, I was touching on, you know, better time management, working, on the business, not so much in it. And this is something that I've struggled with because I'm a, I'm a go-getter type of personality and I'll just, just do it, you know, hashtag just do it. And being able to um, create more leaders and coach and train is, uh, is something that um, I've had to, uh, I've, I've, uh, you know, creating leaders isn't about delegating tasks, it's about delegating the decision process. And so, being able to coach others to be able to make decisions that's consistent with our vision, mission, and core values and the way that I make decisions is what I'm having to work through. I have way more coaches on our team this year than last year. And I have to believe in these people and I have to allow them to go through the decision-making process. And then I have to uh, support that and, uh, you know, building better systems uh, for our expansion teams and for our, our Wichita branch, you know, marketing is changing. Like uh, real estate changes daily, and so you know, uh, focusing on marketing and saying uh, uh, cutting edge and making sure we have our uh, lead uh, per cost in check, and you know, all of these things are um, things that uh, I'm focused on 
currently uh, to, to uh, keep the meter moving forward, right? So, you know, what's the one thing that I can do and, or that you can do and by doing so everything else is easier or unnecessary. For me, it, it was, it's lead generation. Like we're in the business of generating leads and generating qualified appointments. I pride myself on what our call center can deliver to our agents and to our partner. And that is, that makes everything else easier. If we focus on delivering qualified listing appointments, qualified buyer appointments, good leads into a growing database, everything else, everything else is uh, uh, un unnecessary, you know? prospecting, lead generation, recruiting, expansion teams, training, coaching, more systems, right? These are, these are the things that I'm having to prioritize on, but constantly focus on lead generation is, is the one thing that all of us should be focused on, whether you're an owner or just a brand new agent. If we're not generating new leads or new business, we're not going to be in business. And so uh, that is – that is our one thing. That is what you should focus on. That's what I'm focusing on, right? That's what every single one of us has to focus on lead generation day in and day out and tie it to your why because it can become redundant. It can, this can become a grind, right? Oh, I have to prospect today. Oh, I have to deliver a webinar today. Oh, I have like all these things like that we have to step up and perform and do it with purpose like that, that is our one thing. And I tie it back to our big, hairy, audacious goal and being able to change the way real estate is done for a better client experience and to be able to take an independent brokerage national and to be able to have 500 offices. That gets me jacked up. You know, that's why, you know, I can move with a purpose. Like, um, and I keep everyone tied to our vision. I keep everyone tied to our goals. And you guys should hold each other accountable to that as to, to the vision and to the mission and the expansion and the growth. Um, and uh, you, you help enough people be, you help enough people achieve what they want. I promise you, you're going to be taken care of. Um, I, 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 when, when I, I was talking to a buddy last week, I'm like, I don't even feel like I'm in real estate anymore. I haven't, I'm so far removed from the process. It's, it, it, it's scary sometimes. Um, I haven't sold a house in over three years. I haven't, I've been working, uh, 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 as a leader in our, in our company for over three years. And now I'm scaling myself off of the Wichita branch, uh, even, and, uh, I feel, um, I feel excited, but I feel anxiety at the same time because I'm just doing something totally different and I'm stretching myself and attempting to become a better, younger, uh, uh leader and, uh, you know, trying to balance it all as well and, uh, not disappoint, uh, partners, not disappoint my the people that work directly for me on the coaching side of the business, not to let my, my wife down or whatever. And so tying, <clears throat> tying it all back to the big, hairy, audacious goal is what keeps me jacked up um, with all of this stuff. And so, you know, you need a big, hairy, audacious goal for yourself, whether it's 50 units, maybe it's 25 units, maybe it's tied to revenue or volume. Like for me, <clears throat> I had to tie weight loss, you know, to why I'm going to the gym. I had to, I had to visually see the X's. I had to visually see the chain. I had to visually say and put it up somewhere. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Right. Or there was no, there was no goal. There was no target. Um, and, and so what, you know, what is your big audacious goal? You know, you can tie it into the companies. You can align with that, right? Uh, I think every single one of you guys, it's your responsibility to help grow that brokerage. Look, look at how far we have came together and look how far I personally came from coming in and being paid $100 for every qualified appointment I could tee up to not knowing anything in real estate, to flipping it to ownership, expanding, and doing what I love to do. And you, you can do the same thing, but you're going to have to start knocking over your domino one at a time, and anything is possible. I tell all of our agents, it's your responsibility to help recruit. It's not just Adam or Steve or Gerbic or whatever. Like it's up to you guys to believe in the brand. It's up to you guys to believe in the systems. It's up to you guys to, to believe that you're the best option for a client and for uh, a, a, an agent that brokerage is right. And so our agents, 
are constantly feeding our recruiting uh, uh, pipeline. And I think we pay $750 if they're with us for X amount of time, so we pay a bonus and we help them. But if you don't believe in the brokerage and you don't believe in the systems and you don't believe in the leadership and you don't believe in the team, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come across. And so I challenge you guys to be excited. Tell other people about it. Constantly be influencing other people like you have to do with, with, with your clients. Um, I'm constantly talking about select homes when I'm bumping in to other agents. I'm not going to closings or out in the field as much. Um, and so I, cha I challenge you guys, um, since you are the front line and you're out there bumping into agents, to, be, to sell a brand to them, to, to build it, to demonstrate leadership, to build, build, build a team within a team. You know, I, we have like seven teams within our team right now, and I anticipate on that getting bigger and stronger. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, I just don't put recruiting on one, on one agent, like, or one, or one person on our team. I really, I really pitch to everyone, like, if you believe in what we're doing, get as many people involved, right? And that's what I would challenge you guys on as, on, on as well. Uh, I had an agent tell me the other day, or it was a month or so ago, she's like, you need to do more stuff at the war office. I mean, because people, like, in town don't really know you anymore because I'm not working on the field and I'm quarterbacking everything from think tanks or I'm live and direct like this with coaching clients or uh, whatever or presenting. Uh, you know, there's some agents only see me when I present uh, a couple times a month to the team. That's the only time certain agents see them. And I told the agent, it's not my responsibility to do this a hundred percent. It's up to you guys to change perception, influence others, re help recruit, start to build your own team within the team to start demonstrating leadership that way. Um, and so you know, I would challenge you guys to do the same thing there. If you really believe uh, in the mission of changing lives by changing the way real estate industry works through teamwork, innovation, experience, and delivering on client experiences and delivering a better uh, process for the client overall. So, um, you know, what, what, is, what is your goal for your business? Do you have a five-year goal? What's your, what is, what is your career goal? You know, where, what do you want to, where do you want to be in five years? These are things that, I want to work with people that have absolute certainty of what they want to do in one year, one week, one day, one month. And so take some time for yourself and don't half-ass it, but what is your five-year goal? Do you want to be doing the same exact thing you're doing now? More than likely not, right? We want continuous improvement. We want, we want growth. We want to thrive. And so put a five-year plan together. Write it out. What's it going to look like? Visualize it. You know, by, by achieving the five-year goal, it's going to help um, whatever, tie it to your big, hairy, audacious goal. You know, what's your one-year financial plan? I know you guys have set your goals and, uh, and, and worked on them. How, are you on track to hit your financial goals uh, for, for the year? I mean, if not, what, what, a, what habit do we need to change to be able to help you hit your goal? <clears throat> By, you know, by, by hitting your one-year goal, it's going to help you tie into your monthly goals, right? What is your monthly goal? Or do you just go through the day and say, I want to make whatever happens. I, I just, I'm okay with just making whatever, whatever my efforts bear. For me, for me, I say I want to make $20,000 this month. What do I need to work on or what revenue or metric do I need to drive to make $20,000 a month? And then I reverse engineer the activities and my schedule to be able to make sure I hit the $20,000 a month. There are, things, there are things that I am no longer doing in this company that I had to stop doing because it was no longer aligned with the income that I was attempting to generate. <clears throat> and, it, and it was sad because there's certain things that, you know, I enjoyed doing that was part of the business. But when I looked at my five-year goal or big, hairy, audacious goal, and then what I had to do monthly to be able to hit those goals, I had to say no to stuff. No, I can't do that. That's not me. I have to focus here to be able to have a high impact in terms of income producing activities, you know, for myself or for the business or for others. And if you're hitting your monthly goal, you're probably going to hit your week, weekly goal. 
when I was selling homes, my, my, my weekly goal was to pen two homes a week, part time. And I would hit my goals because I would say, I'm going to pen 10 homes a week. I track all of my metrics. So I knew from a, my own skill set how many people I needed to talk to to set an appointment. I knew how many people was gonna no-show. I knew how many people would actually sign agency. I knew how many showing sessions I had to get out and have to be able to pin the home. I mathematically cracked the equation off of my skill set, And I showed others how to do it too. So you know exactly what you need to do to be able to hit your income goals, right? So even, even for some of our partners to hit their goal in terms of growing their brokerage, the recruiting deal has to be fixed. Right? Because oh, we can only sell so many homes with the people that we have. And so being able to crack that recruiting code and make it predictable through, um, through nurturing conversations, pipelines, you know, interviews, all of this stuff is going to be very important to the success of these brokerages and being able to make them, make them uh, uh, predictable. So, you know, be sincere with, with, your, with your goals. And reverse it from the five years all the way down to a day. I, I know where I personally want to be in three to five years, right? And I know where I want to be this year. And I know what I have to do day in and day out to be able to get there. And you guys, and you guys should break all of your metrics down and your numbers and make sure that they align with your goals and uh, focus on them daily. Most people just focus on goals at the end of the year. Yeah, we got to focus on our goals and – create some more lofty stuff and then like you never bring them out and talk about them. I'm constantly, every meeting that I run, I run probably two meetings now in our Wichita branch a month. First thing I always start off with is our numbers in comparison to our goal. This is how I keep people focused on our goal and our target and making sure that we can break through the ceilings to be able to uh, achieve it. And if we're not talking about it, and if we're not revisiting goals, and if I'm not helping people hit their goals, I'm not doing, I'm not doing any justice as a leader to them. Every single person that works directly for me or with me earns over six figures a year, except one person. I take it personal to, personally to be able to get her up over six figures. Because my, one of my goals is, is creating more six-figure earners within our company. That's a personal goal of mine, and I have it written down. And one of my other goals is, is if you work directly with me, you make six figures. And right now, I have one of our coaches, you know, her father just passed away, and she's had some turbulence in her life. And, I mean, she's, uh, I mean, she's going through a tough time in her life, right? <clears throat> However, if she's not hitting her goal, I take it personally. And I ask her, how can I serve you better? What can I do for you? How can I help you get out of this funk? You know, 90% of our stuff is, I think Martin likes to call it head trash, right? And it is. And, how, and all I have to do is help her take the trash out. And granted, you know, she's going to have to go through the process of her father passing away. But being able to get back in and uh, get back to work and, uh, you know, feel valued again and, and start working with others is, uh, is, is what I'm looking to help her do so she can break through that, that, uh, that, that ceiling. And so these are, these, are, these are goals that you guys should have for yourself, something similar to that. And so I'm just kind of sharing a couple of my goals, um, how I've hit them. And uh, let's see kind of where we're at here. Cool. So we pretty much uh, we pretty much touched on all the stuff that I really wanted to touch on today. Um, you know, I, I really. I really kind of want to wrap this up, you know, by 
we'll just kind of wrap this up here with, with you guys. I know we're kind of up against the time. I know you guys get out of here at 11, but um, we'll just, we'll just kind of wrap, wrap this back up, uh, uh, focusing on some goals. And so I, you know, I, I, I really want you guys to be able to, uh, you know, think big. Uh, I'm going to continuously, you know, challenge you guys to think bigger. Uh, I want you guys to be able to uh, shoot higher, uh, in terms of earning more, becoming better leaders, and uh, really building out this brokerage. And I'm excited to be able to work with you guys um, and uh, really think outside the box and uh, move, move, move the meter forward with our one thing. Um, and I told Martin uh, this year or a couple months ago, my one thing is to really grow Kansas City. Um, and uh, get you guys put on the map and thriving up there. Uh, and I think you guys have made some huge improvements, and you guys have a lot to be thankful for. And it's been fun working with you guys over this last year. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm one to really, uh, you know, get back on the circuit. I'm going to be there next month. Uh, in terms of my schedule right now, I'm floating – uh, to Kansas City or to Springfield every single month. Like I was in Kansas City last month and uh, I'm in Springfield this month. And then I'll be setting a date with, uh, with uh, Martin or Susie here once I get back from Springfield. But it'll probably be the third or fourth week next month. Uh, I'm going to come and rock with you guys. And uh, you guys, I'll, I'll see you guys uh, next month. However, uh, is there any questions or anything like – I've been presenting for over an hour. It's hard to focus much, much longer than a couple hours. But uh, do you guys like the stuff? Was it good stuff today? You guys hopefully was able to kind of follow through with the packet, take some notes, uh, be able to reflect. Hopefully you guys get a lot out of the one thing. I know I did. I created a cheat sheet for you guys. Um, this, this book was pretty timely for me. And uh, I, I read two books a month. And <clears throat> You guys are going to start streaming into our Wichita, Wichita office. And so uh, I'm going to, I'm going to probably put these packets together for you guys like this. So when I'm streaming um, or we're doing these webinars, you guys will be able to follow, follow along with these packets, being able to take notes. Like um, it's, it's important to share this stuff because this is the stuff that, you know, I, I study personally. And these are things that influences myself like and uh being able to devour content and uh you know take the 20 percent out of any given book and try to incorporate it into business and life is important to me uh readers leaders are readers and i have struggled with this in the past of devouring content and being able to uh take those key principles and implement them into the business but every time i've done it i've had huge uh uh, progress uh, in, in, in the business. And so uh, I'm going to be able to take content from things I'm studying. I'll package them to you guys. I'll get them to you guys. And then hopefully you guys will be able to start to follow along uh, once we do the live streaming or webinars like this. But uh, any questions? Anybody? Thank you. Nope. Looks like we're good, Adam. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys spend some time, work through that book. It'll probably take you guys uh, – an hour or so to work through that stuff, you know, be, uh, be genuine with yourself, build a roadmap and, uh, let's, uh, keep moving the meter forward guys. You guys have a good afternoon and I'll see you guys next month. Bye. Bye. Later, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 So it was interesting because so Ian asked, why don't they use like Google hangout or something so we can see everybody. And I said, so Adam's big thing, is for people to focus on the content, not the people. So if you've actually been on call night, um, occasionally they'll pop up, you know, Adam or Mark Venice will have their, their photo or their video up at the top for the webinar and occasionally a couple other people will pop in. But what they, they stopped doing that. I don't, if you've been on the call night, they've stopped doing the, the visual up at the top with the people who are dialing in because people are watching the people instead of watching the screen and understanding what they're doing and how they're managing the dialer and the screen or paying attention to the content. I mean, ultimately as humans, we're very distracted by the things that are going on around us and we'll pay more attention to the stuff that's more interesting than the cursor or the chat on the side. Oh, and chat, and then you're not paying. Right, right. So 
you know, Adam, this is called Zoom. Um, Adam uses that. Uh, we use um, GoToMeeting for most of our webinars and the different things that we do here. But um, that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, we were planning on Adam going until 11, which is why I'd ask everybody to stay a little bit later. But since we're done here, I'm going to uh, and then we'll get started on the last half of our meeting. So I'll turn the lights on and the projector off. And uh, just talk amongst yourselves for a moment.